Right, I think we're ready to start then. So, uh, welcome to the, the Knowledge, Health and Transformation Telesummit. Uh, I'm the, the host, Michael, and I'm here today with Pollyanna, who's going to talk to us today about five fat loss hacks that you can do yourselves, but it's trying to relate it to people who are in the real world. All right, so, Polly, are you ready? Hi there. You good to go? Yep. I'll bring my screen up for you. Okay, are you saying that okay? Not quite, no. Are you sharing my screen? Where are we? Are we there now? We are, yes. Right. Good stuff. Fantastic. Off we go. Right. Yes, my name is Polly Hale. I'm the director of the fitmumformula.com. I'm a personal trainer specializing in female fat loss. I'm a metabolic effect nutritional consultant and a nutritionist. I am a 31-year-old mother of two girls, aged three and six. I don't have a lot of childcare. My three-year-old is only in nursery two mornings a week and my husband's away a lot. Um, I wanted to be at home with the kids um, as a mum, but I'm extremely passionate about health and fitness, both for my own health and also because I love sharing that information with other people um, through my business. So I know what it's like to have no time for myself. I have a household to run, a family to look after, not to mention the business I run from home around the kids. So everything I do in terms of my own food, nutrition and exercise has to be super smart super efficient, time-saving and effective without dedicating my entire life to it because frankly, I do not have that time. So the Fit Mum Formula is an online diet and fitness membership portal for busy women and mums to be able to access all the tools, knowledge and resources to get in shape and feel great from home at a time that suits them. So, um, so it overcomes all the life, work and childcare barriers that have been holding them back. Now from a marketing perspective, it is aimed at women, but the principles are the same for men as well and anyone whose primary goal is fat loss and increasing fitness and health. So it does apply to anybody, but if you go on my website, www.thefitmumformula.com, you will see it is, it is pretty um, female orientated, but um, as I say the principles are the same. So why did I create it? Well, gym classes are not always convenient for everybody. Gym memberships and trainers are for some people um, too expensive. For example, this summit that you're listening to now is free and many people are listening to it are doing so because they can't get access to the support or the information in a gym setting, but they can listen or watch here um, and even listen to the recordings in your own time. So um, just like the Fit Mom formula, it can be done your own terms and it really, really suits busy people with a um, um, with jobs and families and, and everything else they've got to manage. Um, so before I go into my methods um, of how I like to help people with a fat loss goal, um, I just want to state that there is more, one, more than one way to skin a cat. I know that later on in the summit, uh, things like um, if it fit your macros, um, using apps like MyFitnessPal are going to be discussed. Um, and they can be fantastic. They are great tools, but they are not for everybody. Um, not everybody likes tracking. Personally, I don't like tracking. I prefer to focus on the food itself and the nutrients in the food rather than numbers. Um, so that's, that's the way I go. And that's what you'll see coming up later in this presentation. So let's go into the benefits of fat loss right now. First of all, I do want to clarify the difference between fat loss and weight loss. When you step on the scales and you've lost weight, it could be water, which is quite common in the first couple of weeks of um, a weight loss diet, especially if you're going down the low carb route, you can lose water very quickly. You can lose muscle. We don't want to do that because muscle is metabolically active. So that not only keeps you strong, but it also burns a lot of calories even when you're resting. So we want to try and retain as much muscle as possible, probably even build a little muscle for most people, even if they don't want to become a build, bodybuilder per se, building a little bit of muscle will benefit most people. And finally, Finally, bone. If for yo-yo dieters, especially women who yo-yo diet a lot, or people who get down to a very low body weight and body fat, um, you can even lose bone um, density. And that's when you're looking at problems like osteoporosis. So we really don't want to be losing bone or water. We want to keep it to genuine fat loss. 
Right, the people listening into this summit, I know you are educated, smart people, so I'm not going to patronize you by going into the obvious things like cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, arthritis. The whole country knows those things are, um, you've got an increased risk of those things if you are overweight, but that doesn't mean there isn't obesity crisis going on. So I'm going to look at some of the other benefits to fat loss. Number one, sleep. I'm going to talk more about sleep in a little while because that is an important one. Sleep quality will drastically increase when you are healthy in every way, including a healthy weight with a minimal excess body fat. Also, people who are overweight tend to be um, more likely to snore. And you can you can literally wake yourself up from snoring from the noise and also your partner obviously they're going to be suffering sleep too if you're going to be snoring all night so it'll improve your sleep quality. Also in the bedroom we've got sex drive for both men and women actually. Again, if you are not in a really good, um, healthy state, um, your sex drive will be lowered. So losing that excess weight, that excess body fat can uh, can do wonders for that area of your life too. Backache is a really common problem. So many people have backache, especially lower backache. And yes, sedentary lifestyles, sitting too much, that all plays a part. And, um, and weight isn't the only factor going on. Sometimes there are other things that need addressing. But certainly, imagine walking around, doing, going about your daily business, and you've got a rucksack full of rocks on your back, and you've got another bag on your front full of rocks. That's not comfortable. That's not good for your back. So sometimes for some people, just losing that extra little bit of weight can do wonders for, um, for helping with back pain. Right, I might be a stereotype a little bit here when I say clothes shopping because maybe it's, it's more us women who love to go clothes shopping. But imagine going into your favorite shop, being able to pick anything you want and feeling fitting it first of all them having your size because they do tend to have the more average sizes rather than the really large sizes um going in there being able to choose anything you want and and feeling good in it being fitting it looking feeling confident it just makes life easier you can just go and choose whatever clothes you want without having to think about it a little bit more and and be restricted based on the fact that you're carrying this excess weight and that leads on to self-esteem and confidence. So many people I see who are carrying excess weight are hunched over like they have a, like a hunchback. And it's not because of the weight they're carrying. It's because of their confidence. And to be able to go to a party, this time of year you're going to Christmas parties out socializing. To be able to, to walk in the room and knowing and feeling great, feeling energetic, it's priceless. It means so much more than other things. Mental health and mental happiness should never be underestimated and that really really can um, be boosted when you become physically healthier for me the biggest benefit is definitely life is easier I can run around after two hyperactive small children I can bound up the stairs um, when I'm in a hurry with without getting out of breath I can get the Christmas decorations down from the attic without having to ask my husband or nag my husband to do it for me because I'm strong enough to do it I'm fit enough to do all these things anything I want to do I can just go and do it I don't need help anymore and it's just fantastic the, the, the feeling of being at that um that control of being able to do what I want is just brilliant. Right, fat loss hack number one, vegetables. Okay, the reason vegetables are extra important on a fat loss diet is because to achieve that fat loss, you have to be in a calorie deficit. So if you're eating less food overall, you will be um, consuming less micronutrients, fewer vitamins and minerals. Luckily, fruit and vegetables are very high in micronutrients. So if you're getting plenty of them, you're much less likely to be deficient. Also, sometimes cravings for things like chips, cakes, chocolate, whatever it is you're craving can be caused by um, uh, deficiencies. So simply by addressing those deficiencies can go a long way to solving those cravings that are stopping you from sticking to um, your healthy eating plan. Two things that vegetables and fruit are really high in are fiber and water. They are both extremely satiating. And if you're going to be cutting down your calories, you don't want to be feeling hungry. Hunger and cravings are the enemy of fat loss because you, your willpower will only get you through those for so long before you cave in. So you want to try and feel full as much as possible. And that means filling up on as much fiber and water as you can. You can see on the left here, you've got a picture of my fridge, loads of fruit and veg in there with a few protein 
proteins. I'll talk about, about proteins later on. And on the right, frozen as well. Nothing wrong with frozen vegetables. They're absolutely fine. If it gets you eating them, there is no problem with that at all. Right, I want you to get a, a, a pen and paper here now because the bluntest of pencils remembers more than the sharpest of minds. Okay, so write this stuff down. Some people, I will point out, prefer to eat less during, less often during the day, maybe just a couple of meals. Um, nothing wrong with that. However, given what I've said about the importance of fruit and vegetables, they are very filling. Nobody can eat six portions of vegetables in one sitting. If you want to get an optimal amount of fruit and vegetables, you're going to need to spread it out through the day. Okay, I don't know anybody who can eat that much in one sitting. Okay, so... You'll also see a lot of these photos are very amateur looking. That's because they're my real meals. They're my food that I have made and eaten myself. Also, what I will point out is that I am a petite woman. I do exercise. I do work out. However, if you are a perhaps a male, a larger woman, somebody who is much more active than me, you may need more calories than me. I aim for about um, 1,800 a day, and that keeps me at a healthy weight. But you may need more. So this is just a guideline to give you an idea. Breakfast. One or two handfuls of fruit and veg could be a punnet of berries, an apple. If you like eggs and savory things, have some mushrooms and tomatoes. You can see on the left there I've made sort of an egg scramble thing with peas and all sorts in there. Mid-morning, more with protein. Okay, so we've got apple with some nut butter. I'm not against protein bars, either homemade or good quality ones. You know, we're busy. As long as you pick the good quality ones, I'm really not against um, decent quality protein bars. Have some raw carrots, some fruit, something like that with it. Lunchtime, at least half of your plate should be vegetables or salad. Again, you really want to be getting those micronutrients in. You want to get that fiber, that water, that bulk to fill you up, stop you feeling hungry and snacking on other things throughout the day. You can see we've got some steak there, some fish. I think the one on the right is a, maybe a chicken salad with some Greek yogurt dressing. And in the afternoon, we've got more fruit with Greek yogurt there. Again, fruit with protein, really filling, really satiating, um, really nutritious, going to stop me picking up rubbish the rest of the day. Um, evening meal is a pretty easy one, actually. My, the most easiest of all being a roast dinner, which we've got on the left. It's so easy. You've got your meat, have a little bit of potato, loads of vegetables, um, and, and it's really adaptable. Um, you, it's so easy to put together. And on the right there, I think that's a tuna steak with some beans. And I've got a homemade salsa there. I think that's one of the recipes from my member's cookbook. But I could have simplified that. You know, I could have picked another simple vegetable, stir, stir fry it in a bit of garlic and soy sauce. Really tasty, really quick, not too high calorie, really filling. Something I've got into in the past couple of years is using vegetables as replacements for other things. Um, and I've got three ideas here. Um, I don't have time to give you the recipes now, but if you email me afterwards, I can, I'm very happy to send you the recipes. That one on the left is actually a fish pie made with cauliflower mash. Now, my kids and husband did not realize that was cauliflower until after the meal, and I told them so. So that was quite impressive, that one. And then we've got cauliflower rice and courgette noodles. You can do use a spiralizer if you have one, but as you can see, I just use a peeler there and it's a great way to lower the calorie um, content of your meal and get those micronutrients and that fiber and water in as well right next sleep the reason I have a picture of a very fit looking um, young woman in the front there is because if you speak to any elite athlete or fitness model physique competitor they prioritize their sleep as much as they do their diet or exercise the most optimal amount of sleep is achieved between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. or more specifically 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So if you did 10 to 5 is 7 hours. If you make it till 6, that's 8 hours, which is fantastic if you can get that. Now the thing is though, because the optimal time is between 10 and 2, a person getting to sleep between midnight and 8 a.m. is not getting as much sleep as somebody who goes to bed at 10 and gets up at 6, even though they've got the same amount in total of sleep because it's the quality that the person who's going to bed earlier is getting really counts. Um, you're more likely, if you're sleep deprived, you'll have higher levels of gr the hormone ghrelin, which makes you hungry. You'll have lower levels of leptin, which um, which makes you um which makes you feel full. Um, you'll also be craving high fat, sugar, starchy, salty foods, all those high density, energy density things that are really not so helpful when you're trying to lose fat. 
Um, so really, you know, you really, really want to be prioritizing sleep and you don't lose time. If you're busy, you don't lose time the next day because when you're um, well rested, you're so much more on the ball. You can get so much more done. And I'm speaking from experience there. I'd love to stay up working all night because I love what I do, but I just can't do it. It doesn't help me in any way. I don't get any more done. The next thing is protein. I've got two plates here to compare to. Um, the first one on the left is the government's Eat Well plate, and the one on the right is my own plate. Now you can see very clearly there, there's on my plate, there are as much more vegetables and there's much more protein and less starch. As I said, there's more than one way to skin a cat and there's nothing wrong with starchy carbohydrates. But if you're on a fat loss diet, you're reducing calories, you want to be stay as, as satiated and as full as possible. Vegetables and protein are the most uh, efficient ways of staying full for most people. And also you want to put a bit of uh, good fats in there as well to slow down digestion and that will help you keep feeling full as well. Now, without knowing the calorie content of any foods, you could take that plate template into any restaurant in the world and pick foods from their menu to fit them into that plate and that would work and that's why I like this method because it's so adaptable you can you can put a, a roast dinner there you could have sausage and mash and peas there you could have any meal in the world almost and make it fit to that plate and you're going to be heading towards the right way in goals um, it, uh, eating more protein uh, stabilizes your blood sugar levels as well. Um, it'll stop that rise and fall and um, th those crashes that lead to more and more cravings. So shopping list. This, I'm going to quickly run through this. Some ideas for um, things to go out. Make sure you've got everything you need. So ideas for proteins, chicken, ham, beef slices, those deli slices that you get for sandwiches. I'm okay with those as long as you get the, the real sliced meat, not the reformed ham with a load of additives in. Tinned and frozen fish, eggs, cottage cheese, uh, Greek yogurt is actually uh, is a lot higher in protein than fruit or just plain natural yogurt. Fats. Now, there's nothing wrong with saturated fats. They were wrongly vilified for years. Um, so don't fear your dairy foods or your um, your red meats at all. However, um, unsaturated fats are also really, really nutritious. So some ideas are avocados, olives, nuts and seeds and their butters. Coconuts are saturated fat, but it's metabolized differently in the body. So it is a super nutritious um, a source of fat, coconut products. They're great. Carbohydrates. Now I said we're going to be reducing carbohydrates slightly because they're not as filling. Um, right, there is nothing wrong per se with bread unless you have celiac disease or um, wheat products. However, they are not the most nutritious of foods and the most filling foods. So when we're on a reduced calorie diet, we're aiming for maximum nutrition. So the sort of sources I prefer are oats, quinoa, rice, beans, sweet potatoes, and also some fruits are a lot higher in sugar and carbohydrates as well like bananas, dried fruits, some tropical fruits as well. And they're all great sources of carbohydrates that I like to have. Right, fruit, vegetables, and salad. Basically all of them. I'd aim for about a third raw salad or vegetables, a third cooked, and a third fruit. Now the reason I say um, half and half raw and cooked is because some nutrients are better absorbed through raw produce. Some are better absorbed when you cook it. It varies across the board and sometimes it can be both for the same vegetable. So I recommend buying um, having about half and half of each and then you're going to get a good range of all of it. And then about a third fruit. You want to have more vegetables and salad than fruit because although fruit is extremely nutritious, it, it does contain sugar and if you were to eat loads and loads of fruit, that sugar would add up over the day. Although you are getting the vitamins and the fiber too, the, the sugar still adds up. This is a bit of a shocker. A family of four, that's an average, needs to buy in their weekly shop, because that's how most people like to shop, 140 portions of fruit and vegetables a week. Think back to the trolleys you see around the supermarket, perhaps even your own if you're a family of four. That's four people, five portions a day minimum, seven days in a week. Do you think there are 140 portions in most people's baskets or trolleys? I don't see that very often, but that's what it is. And that's only five portions a day. That's the minimum. So you really need to be stocking it up as much as possible. Um, some ideas you can have to get protein in. Um, 
for uh, during the day also for sna snacks are the hardest ones I think because I, most people eat meat fish eggs cheese that kind of stuff for main meals snacks but as I said I'm I'm not averse to protein bars or protein shakes if you buy decent quality ones um, nuts are okay too nuts and seeds and nut butters they're pretty good cottage cheese can make quite a nice snack as well yogurt they're all they're all really convenient ones those um, you want to limit the processed foods as well, like uh, processed sausages and meats. Um, sorry, I skipped ahead a little bit there. Um, things like sausages um, and those processed meats, processed carbohydrates, uh, dried fruits, all of those, you know, they're okay in moderation, but they, they don't deliver anything like the benefits of the whole foods, the things that come as single ingredients. So that really needs to make up the majority of your shopping basket. Okay, on to my next fat loss hack is keeping a food diary. You can do this in numerous ways. Um, you can keep a, a little pocketbook, maybe in your gym bag or in your handbag, maybe if it's small enough in your, in your actual coat pocket. Um, write it down as you go along, everything you have. Be as specific as possible, quantities, teaspoons, grams, however you like to measure your food. Write it be as detailed as possible. Can be a little bit time consuming, but what most people have these days, everybody has a smartphone, right? Well, I recommend everything you eat and drink for a week or so, take a photo of it. I mean, literally everything. At the end of the week, upload it to the computer. Look at all the pictures next to each other. Does it look like the diet of somebody who is following a healthy whole foods fat loss diet? It'll be pretty easy to see because you'll be able to see the picture straight in front of you. Maybe there's a few things that you had a little too often, too frequently. Maybe the portion sizes were a bit big. Maybe you're lacking in fruit and vegetables. Maybe your protein sources were more, were more processed. Have a look at it, and it's a it's a real um it's it's a really easy way to to visualize, see everything that you're eating all at once because we do forget what we've had, and that's the problem with writing things down at the end of the day. If you're going to write it down, write it down immediately because you'll just forget, and there won't be an accurate representation. Keeping a diary can double your um, the amount of weight loss you can use. Studies show, so it really really is worth doing. I say if you want to go for the easy option, take the photos. It's it's still it's still good. You can still it still works that way. Right. Exercise, the final fat loss hack. Can't miss this one. Right, there are different ways of exercising, obviously. We've got weightlifting. This is excellent for building muscle. Um, and as we said, we want to retain as much muscle as possible. It's metabolic active. It burns calories. It keeps you strong. It gives you that kind of lean, defined look that people often like to call tones that people are after. Um, it's not it doesn't directly burn a lot of fat but the fact that you're building muscle and having to repair that muscle every time you do a workout it indirectly burns fat then we've got steady state cardio like um like jogging cycling power walking um those are okay they burn fat while you're doing them but not so much afterwards and they're not as efficient for fat burning they're great for lung and heart health but when it comes to fat burning they're not the most efficient way of exercise you have to do a lot of jogging to burn off a lot of fat and the problem is in doing a lot of it will also increase cortisol levels which is a stress hormone and that can indirectly make you hold on to fat stores as well and it can uh, make you lose muscle as well if you're not careful in doing some resistance exercises as well if you're just doing the jogging you might find that you're losing fat but you're losing muscle as well so become a smaller skinny fat person and we don't want that either my favorite High intensity interval training. Some studies show that 15 minutes of HIT give you the same benefits as one hour of steady state cardio. A 2011 study from the American College of Sports Medicine found that two weeks of HIT gave the same aerobic benefits as six to eight weeks of steady state cardio. And it's got that resistance element as well, so that you're retaining muscle and possibly even building muscle, depending on what exercises you choose. And it also gives you this fantastic afterburn effect, where because of this high-intensity nature, your body has to repair itself after the exercise. And all that repairing 
burns calories. So you can be burning more calories even while you're resting for hours, possibly even days after you've done a workout. Um, it shouldn't last you any more than 45 minutes and you shouldn't be able to do it every day. I would say if you can go for longer than 45 minutes, probably less than that, uh, and if you can do it every day, you're not doing it correctly. That high intensity, I mean that, it has to be intense and that's why you don't need so much of it because you're working so hard during that short amount of time. It stimulates a human growth hormone, which is uh, really important for building muscle. Um, and some studies have shown that human growth hormone can be elevated for up to 450% for 14 hours after doing an intense exercise session. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Um, it can be done anywhere, indoors, um, at home when it's raining. You don't need any equipment. And it can be adjusted for any fitness level because, of course, the word intense is relative. For a very fit person, doing a minute of full press-ups might be intense. For somebody who's new to exercise, achieving 10 box press-ups over the course of a minute with breaks in between, maybe that's intense. So it really can be applied to absolutely anybody. You just have to make sure that the exercises you choose, um, the work to rest ratio that you choose is suitable for your fitness level. And you can progress that, as I said, easily. You can add some dumbbells, start doing uh, you know, make everything that little bit harder, the, the, the fitter you go and take shorter rest periods. But it's really suitable for everybody. It's fantastic. You can apply it to, to sprinting as well. Rather than jogging, do sprint, walk, sprint, walk. It's the same principle. And it works really, really well. Okay, so just to summarize. I'm not asking you to be perfect or um, take on load of new qualifications, start reading everything or be obsessive. Just, we don't have time for that, right? We're busy people. We want the big things that are gonna, that are gonna do, give us the maximum result with a minimum amount of effort. You want to put the fundamentals in place. They are the big rocks that are gonna have the biggest positive effect. Everything else is fluff, quite frankly. You don't need to worry about the tiny details unless you are a professional or elite athlete, a fitness model or a physique competitor. People come to me saying to me, what about this supplement? What about this herbal tea? What about that? You know, some of those things have some great science behind them and they may work at an elite level when you're literally on the final 0.1% and it can make a difference. But if you're not getting the fundamentals in place, place like getting lots of vegetables, Vegetables, your protein, getting some efficient exercise in. None of that stuff matters. It really doesn't. So just remember these five fundamental things I've told you today. I hope you've been keeping notes as you went along. So just to summarize those again, we've got vegetables, protein, sleep, efficient exercise, and finally, accountability to do all of these things, either to yourself by keeping a diary, like with the, with the photos, or with a friend. Tell your friends and family about what you're doing. If you go to the gym, take a gym buddy or rope somebody else in to do to a workout with you or go for a walk with you. You can get a coach. You can um, definitely pay for a coach to keep you accountable if that's what it is. Share your, um, your meals on Instagram, get feedback from them, whatever it is you choose to do. By sharing what you're doing, you are much more likely to stick at it because those people are holding you accountable and it's going to be embarrassing if you fail sometimes. So uh, don't worry about it. Everyone fails sometimes. But just, just having people there, knowing that they're watching what you're doing really, really does help people get um, keep people on track. So that comes the end of my presentation. And I think, have we got some time for questions, Michael? Uh, yeah, we should have. Um, How long have we got left? We should have the uh, last few minutes. So have you got any, have you got any questions on you or? <coughs> okay. Okay, well somebody, um, I did get some, uh, some questions. Um, sent to me before this when people have registered they've asked me um someone's asked me here do i recommend paleo okay um what i dislike first of all about paleo diet is the fact that it's called the paleo diet that insinuates that it is a short-term strict fad diet and that bit i don't like i don't think one size fits all and i don't think anybody should be um sticking to something uh, religiously and demonizing anything unless they have a genuine allergy of course to something 
But what I do like about the paleo diet is that it is made up of whole, nutritious, natural foods and it eliminates all processed food or junk food and also a lot of the things that are not evil foods but they're just not as nutritious as others things like wheat products for example they're not evil but they're not as nutritious as some other forms of carbohydrates so it is a very nutrient dense diet to follow and if you need a starting place I would say that's a good place to start. And then you can tweak it. Some people do a relaxed version. They include high quality dairy. They include some grains like oats and quinoa. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's various levels to how strict you can take it. But um, if you're going to follow any sort of diet, I would, I would say paleo is great. Most, a lot of paleo people tend to jump in and go very low carb on it. That's not necessary. You don't have to go super, super low carb or ketogenic, which is extremely low carb, by going on a keto, uh, on a paleo diet. Paleo is more about really the types of food that you're choosing, which are very good quality foods. So that one, if you, I do like it. We've got any more time for any more questions? Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think you okay. covered quite a lot of bases there, Polly. So thanks very much for that. Thank you. That's helpful. All right. I All right. Shall... Oh, go on. Thank you for everyone. Um, I think you're going to be putting, I've got a free gift that you're going to be putting in the, um, in links sent out at the end with the recordings. Is that right? That's right. Yes. Yeah, that's my free fat loss guide. That includes um, the fundamental points. It's a great starting point um, for anybody wanting to get on a fat loss journey. So the link to that will be put up along with the recordings um, and you can get your free guide downloaded instantly there. All right, awesome. Thank you for listening, everybody. I hope that was useful and email me anytime with any questions. I'm always here to help you out with anything you need to know. So get in touch.